What's up guys, the snowman here and today I've got part four of a six part video series uh, previewing all six groups for Euro 2021 this summer. Please check out my other group previews as well, but today's focus is the four teams in group D. Uh, they are England, Croatia, Scotland, and the Czech Republic. So I'm excited to talk about these four nations, uh, go over how each team's qualification went for the Euros, hone in on head coaches and star players, and uh, give my expectations for each of these teams in Group D. And starting off with England, who are the pretty healthy favorites in this group, uh, it was a total no contest for the three Lions throughout qualifying. They had one of the very best goal differentials in all of European qualifying, 37 goals scored and just six goals conceded. Uh, England scored at least four goals in seven of their eight qualifying matches. The one game where they failed to do so was a 2-1 defeat in Prague to the Czech Republic, who we'll speak about in a bit. But uh, striker Harry Kane led the way uh, in all of Europe with 12 goals, Raheem Sterling scoring 8-2. And England should be feeling good about themselves, especially with the fact they have home field advantage. They're going to be playing all three of these group stage games in Group D uh, at home in Wembley Stadium and the semifinals and the Euro 2021 final in Wembley as well. The head coach or manager of England is Gareth Southgate, 50-year-old former player for England who's already accomplished a lot as manager of the national team. Southgate took the job in 2016 after the resignation of Sam Allardyce. Since then, a fourth place finish at the World Cup in Russia three years ago, a third place finish at the 2019 UEFA Nations. League. Uh, Southgate also has experience coaching in the Premier League with Middlesbrough. The marquee superstar for England is their 27-year-old striker Harry Kane and as I said before the leading scorer in Euro qualifying. Kane also in the driver's seat to obtain his third career Premier League golden boot this season. That's coming off the 2018 World Cup where Kane was the leading scorer in Russia and he's well on his way to becoming the all-time leading scorer for the English national team. Uh, everything Kane touches turns to goals and I expect him to feast in this group, especially against Scotland and the Czech Republic. Don't take your eyes off Kane. Also, a quick shout out to the dynamic 21-year-old winger, Jaden Sancho. He's missed some time for Borussia Dortmund with an injury in 2021, but when Sancho is on the pitch for England, just seems like he gives them an extra dimension offensively, especially with Raheem Sterling on the other wing. Expectations, England actually have the best odds of any team at the Euros to advance out of the group and make the knockout stage. A lot of that is because of the softer group. Uh, England will be licking their chops at these opponents in Group D. However, bad news for fans of the three Lions. Uh, if they win this group, that means their first knockout stage game will be against the runner-up from Group F. And there's a very high likelihood that that team will either be France, Germany, or Portugal. So not a fun round of 16 matchup. You know, even though a lot of bookies have England as one of the top two or three teams to win this title, that's certainly their ceiling uh, I actually believe they're going to fall in the round of 16 to a team like France or Germany. I just think that it's a very tough draw for England. It would almost behoove them to finish in second place and get an easier path. Uh, nonetheless, there's, there's certainly a wide variance of possible outcomes for England at these Euros. The second team in Group D is the reigning World Cup finalist, Croatia, and it was a, a relatively straightforward path through qualifying for the Croats, who were placed in one of the most competitive qualifying groups you'll ever see. Uh, four of these five teams ended up making the finals this summer. We'll see every team except for Azerbaijan. Uh, Croatia just won defeat in qualifying, though that was to Hungary, uh, but they did manage to enact their revenge uh, to the tune of a 3-0 victory at home over the Hungarians, and most of the damage being done by the cast that took the world by storm in Russia 2018. Guys like Modric, Perisic, Kovacic, uh, with a couple of fresher faces too, in particular Nikola Vlasic, Bruno Petkovic, and Petkovic uh, led Croatia with four goals in qualifying as he continues to try to fill that void, the goal-scoring void that was left when uh, Mario Mandzukic retired. Plenty of talent, though, all around with Croatia. Croatia's head man is Zlatko Dalic, a former midfielder who never had the opportunity to represent his country at the international level. Uh, he had a pretty tight leash when he was appointed manager back in October 2017. Qualification for the 2018 World Cup was a virtual must-have if Dalic wanted to retain the job. And all he's done since then is get them to the World Cup, defeating Greece in the playoff. Then they made some serious noise in Russia, making the final Croatia's best ever result at a World Cup. 
seems like uh, Dalic should be there long term. And as far as the star for the Croats is concerned, we have to talk about 35-year-old Luka Modric, who's been in fine form for Real Madrid lately. Uh, one of the absolute best in the game at setting the midfield tempo thanks to his world-class vision and passing ability. And he's accomplished so much throughout his career. 2018 Ballon d'Or winner, golden ball at the World Cup, a four-time Champions League winner. And Modric gives Croatia a chance against the elite teams in the world because of his capacity to retain possession, build attacks through the middle, link up other middies with wingers and strikers. And he really is a conductor out there, a legendary orchestrator. Modric is uh, still very much so the heartbeat of Croatia. And it's tough to put a cap on expectations for Croatia, especially uh, considering what they did at the World Cup a few summers ago. I think quarterfinals is a reasonable guess as to where they'll finish up at Euro 2021 likely uh, finish second place in this group and then you know they can beat a team like Poland or Sweden in the round of 16 but I do think it's going to be a, a slightly weaker squad than the one we saw at the World Cup namely Ivan Rakitic retiring from this team Mandzukic is gone as well so uh, still an excellent team but maybe not a title contender. The third team in Group D is England's neighbors to the north Scotland. This will be their first major tournament appearance in 23 years since the 1998 World Cup. So a huge accomplishment and Scotland might have just had the most dramatic path to Euro 2021 than any other team. Uh, it was not an easy qualifying campaign. It got started off with, uh, in a frustrating way, losing 3-0 to Kazakhstan. They also sustained a pair of defeats each to the two frontrunners in the group, Belgium and Russia. Uh, then they kind of got their bearings. They uh, righted the ship against the likes of Cyprus and San Marino. And on match day 10, with everything on the line, a second half come from behind win against Kazakhstan. That pushed them to third in the group and into the playoff. And from there, the drama just got heightened even more. It took not one, but two penalty shootout victories to push Scotland over the line. A Kenneth McLean scoring the winning, winning penalty both times to send his country into pure euphoria. And uh, just like the last time Scotland was at the Euros in 1996, they'll have to meet England at Wembley Stadium. Every pub across Britain is going to be filled to the brim. I cannot wait for this uh, great rivalry to be renewed. And Steve Clark is the man responsible for steering Scotland back to the Euros, former Chelsea and Scottish defender. A multitude of experience coaching in the English Premier League. Clark has been in charge of the Scottish national team since May 2019. And one of the key players for the Scots, 26-year-old midfielder John McGinn. He's tough and rugged, sort of an old-fashioned player. Uh, yes, he's got the tackling and the technical abilities, but he also has a real engine, a real tenacity to his game. Plays for Aston Villa professionally, where he has them as a mid table side having a great season not to mention McGinn led Scotland in qualifying with seven goals some real special highlights along the way and by all accounts he seems like a, a guy you just want on your side to go to battle with on the pitch just all heart for expectations Scotland's odds are almost 50 50 in terms of uh, whether they make it out of the group or be eliminated beforehand you figure a lot of that will likely come down to their opening match in Glasgow against the Czech Republic and I think that home field advantage is enough to push them over the top uh, just from watching football on TV you could tell that the fervor and the passion is off the charts in Scotland. I'd love to watch a, a football match there at some point in my life, but my gut tells me that Scotland will advance out of this group as the third place team, uh, beat the Czech Republic, and uh, make a little bit of noise. Lastly in this group, let's talk about the Czech Republic, and they're impressively into their seventh consecutive European finals. They have never failed to qualify for the Euros as an independent nation. Again, they were in the same uh, qualifying group as the English, but the Czech Republic finishing as runners-up uh, thanks in large part to a vital 2-1 win over England. That was England's first European or World Cup qualifying defeat in 44 games. So not an easy feat there accomplished for the Czechs. 13 goals scored, 11 goals against. Uh, four of those qualifying goals along the way were scored by Bayer Leverkusen forward Patrick Schick. And uh, not a ton of uh, household names. There's really only a few players that play for major European clubs. The Czech Republic, they, they kind of do it with team spirit and organization. The coaching situation is pretty interesting for the Czech Republic. Jaroslav Silavi took over midway through the qualifying campaign in September 2018. And the team morale has been night and day with Selavi compared to his unpopular predecessor, Karl Jarolim. Uh, the squad injected with new life the last couple of years. 
Salavi, a very experienced former defender, made 465 appearances in the Czech top flight, which is still a record. And there's not necessarily one overpowering star player, but Thomas Suchek putting together a fantastic season in the Premier League with West Ham United. Suchek, a very uh, physical defensive midfielder, energetic box to box, adds value to the Czechs with both attack and defense. Just had his first international hat trick in a World Cup qualifier versus Estonia in March. And Suchek is the reigning Czech footballer of the year from both 2019 and 2020. So like Scotland, the uh, round of 16 should definitely be the target for the Czechs. Uh, of course, they should have some added confidence because of the big qualifying win over England. I think that with the Czech Republic's midfield, they'll have the ability to sustain pressure from their opponents. We know they're going to be very uh, tactically solid from the back and organized. My only concern is where are the goals coming from? Like who's actually scoring the goals for the Czech Republic? It's a very weak forward group. So that's why I have a, a bit more confidence in Scotland to finish third place. But if the Czech Republic uh, makes the round of 16, that'll be mission accomplished for sure. And thank you so much for watching my Group D preview. Uh, please leave a comment. I'd love to know your thoughts on how you think uh, this group will shake out. If you think England and Croatia will make deep runs at the Euros. Uh, please check out my other group previews as well. Subscribe to Snowman Sports Media for more uh, soccer and football content. And thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.